الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala filled our lives with his rahmah and his mercy. We see signs of rahmah from every corner, from every angle, in every situation. The most difficult situation we face in our life analyze the situation you will see there are it's that one difficulty is surrounded with thousands of blessings and the greatest of the blessings would be the blessing of hidayah if a person gets everything of this life and no hidayah got nothing and when we look at this hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's an amazing gift and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for us to be able to secure our hidayah he gave us so many opportunities just like we see when the businessman would like their store to stay busy they keep on having different type of sale and every some time there is a flyer coming up there is this sale there is this sale there is this thing there there is that thing there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his deen the way he's giving us and the way he's giving us these opportunities through different timings it's something that no one in the world can ever offer us anything similar to this see we had the month of shaban and then the whole month of shaban was very important month and then 15th of Sha'ban. And then we got the month of Ramadan. The whole month was a very, very important month, and especially the last 10 days. In those last, last 10 days, then especially Laylatul Qadr. Then, month of Ramadan is over. We get into the months of Hajj. And we get into the month of Muharram. Now we are in the month of Muharram. The beginning of the year. The month of Muharram, the whole month is called Shahrullah the month of Allah subhanallah opportunity after opportunity this is the month of Allah and especially the first 10 days of Muharram are more important than the remaining and especially the 10th of Muharram which we know is Ashura has a special reward a special gift for us that you fast for one day sins of two years will be forgiven what more can we ask for imagine a person comes on the day of Qiyam and he says ya Allah I didn't get a chance what do you mean you didn't get a chance? And especially the time that we are in right now, look at it. We just had the month of Ramadan. Then we had Laylatul Qadr. We had the last 10 days of month of Ramadan. And now we are in the month of Muharram. What more do we need? 
So our Iman, then Zul Hijjah, the 10 days of Zul Hijjah that we knew, best days of the year, best days of the world. So month of Ramadan, 10 days of Zul Hijjah, right now we should be at our peak with our Iman and A'mal. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us these days of Muharram that do whatever you can now show me what you can do in the month of Muharram. I have a cell phone. I keep it on a charger. Charge the whole day. When I try to make a call, it dies. So I keep it on the charger another day. Again, I try it, it died. Third time, I keep it another day. Now it's been on the charger for three days. I try to use it, it dies right away. What everyone would tell me about this phone? That the battery is dead. The phone is useless. Take it to some shop that can either fix it or you replace your phone. Our battery was charged during the month of Shaban and then Ramadan and then the Hijjah. And right now is the battery is dead? Then you tell me what we need to do. If our battery is still dead, after all of that, it's been charging all of that time. And is it still dead? Is still no Quran? Is still no Nawafil? Is still no time for awrad, adhkar, tasbihat? Is still we don't have time to send salat and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Time to sit and do some istighfar, seeking Allah's forgiveness, sitting and doing some praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al azim. No time for none of that. The battery is dead. The phone is useless. This is Quran. He says, if your battery is dead, Allah will bring some other phones. You turn away, Allah will bring some other people who would do it. They will not be like you. They will not be like you. A person accepted Islam. First Ramadan, he came to me. Shaykh, tell me some adhkar to do. I told him to do la ilaha illallah because he just came into Islam. He doesn't know Quran. He doesn't know any adhkar. He doesn't know. So he won't be able to do a lot of nawafil, Quran. He doesn't know how to recite. I said, say la ilaha illallah. How many times? As much as you can. Sit in the masjid. Keep on saying la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah. After some time, he came to me. I asked him. I said, how much la ilaha illallah are you reciting? He says, 100,000 times every day. This is a person who just came into Islam. 100,000 times every day. Maybe we won't even get a chance to say 1,000 times every day. Let alone 1,000 times. We know our situation. If you turn away, Allah says, I'll bring other people. They won't be like you. And we see it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa a dua to be recited at the beginning of the month and beginning of the year. This is so that we realize that these timings are important. So we are entering a new year. We are entering a new month. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us a dua. And through this dua, he will tell us what are our goals. What goals are we supposed to set for our souls? The hadith says, كَانَ أَصْحَابُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَتَعَلَّمُونَ الدُّعَاءَ كَمَا يَتَعَلَّمُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Sahaba رِضْوَانُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ مَجْمَعِينَ Used to learn this dua the way they would learn how to recite a surah of Qur'an. They used to memorize it the way you, they would memorize the surah of a Qur'an. This is how they used to memorize this dua. The way you would memorize a surah of a Quran. And the dua is, إِذَا دَخَلَ الشَّهْرُ أَوِ السَّنَةِ When you enter a new year or a new month, you recite every month, every lunar month, you will recite this dua. اللهم أدخله علينا بالأمن والأمان والسلامة والإسلام وجوار من الشيطان ورضوان من الرحمن. يا الله, allow us to enter this year بالأمن والأمان with والإيمان with peace and Iman. What is the most important thing, goals of my life? What are the most important achievements I like to achieve during this month and during this year? Am and Iman. 
that I remain peaceful for myself, for others, and Iman, and my Iman is intact, and my Iman is preserved, with Salama, and being in security, being secure, secure, well Islam, and my Islam being there, which means physical practices, A'mal, Islam generally refers to the good deeds. So my Iman, which is my beliefs, my faith is there, and my Islam, which is my A'mal, good deeds are there. وَجَوَارٍ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ And a protection from shaitan. وَرِضْوَانٍ مِّنَ الرَّحْمَانِ And the pleasure of Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those of us who have the habit of googling the information, if you really do that, right now you may be thinking the hadith is weak. Because when I google also, this is, what, this is the response I find. That this dua is weak. There is, it's not been narrated in any authentic hadith. This is the problem with Googling. And this may be the reason until our last generation, everyone used to recite this dua and all of these duas. And right now, just like there are people who write up front say, we don't need hadith wal ayazu billah. There is a large group of people. People are just falling into that fitna. No need of hadith. Quran is enough for us. Just like there are those people, there are others who claim to be following hadith, but every hadith is weak, every hadith is weak. Subhanallah, yes, when they say the hadith is weak, they're looking at the narrations that have a weak chain of narrators. But the hadith that I have just narrated is narrated with an authentic isnad. No scholar in the world has any objection to this chain of narrator. It's only, it's in a book that normally we don't read. that generally we don't read and in fact I will mention the name of the book many of us we will not even think that there is any hadith or may not even have heard the name of the hadith of, the, of that book it's Al-Isaba Fi Tamiz Al-Sahaba by Hafiz ibn Hajar Rahimahullah Hafiz ibn Hajar Rahimahullah narrates this hadith in Al-Isaba Fi Tamiz Al-Sahaba and he says Abdullah ibn Hisham radiyallahu anhu is the narrator is a sahabi of Rasulullah new name for us even as a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we cannot even recognize that sahabi how would you think we have heard the hadith ever before so Abdullah ibn Hisham radiyallahu anhu who narrates this hadith is a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says he's the one who narrates that sahaba used to learn this dua the way anyone would learn a surah of Quran how important it was for them and how neglectful we all to it. So don't just get information here and there. Let's have right sources of information before we lose our deen. Things are just amal are going out of our deen because it could be weak, it could be weak. If it is not even weak, if we don't even know it's weak, then it could be weak. The ummah throughout the 1400 years, they were not blind. They were not ignorant. We are not the first generation of the Muslim Ummah in the world. Look at what they have practiced. When Imam Tirmizi rahimahullah narrated the hadith of Salat al-Tasbih in Sunan al-Tirmizi, after narrating the hadith, the most important part he mentioned over there, he says, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, I'm sure we all recognize Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He says, Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to read Salat al-Tasbih. What, what is he trying to tell us? So, it's important that we make sure that we learn things from right sources. Anyway, the point is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us this beautiful dua. That at the beginning of the month, beginning of the year, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for security and protection of your iman. And for safety and your a'mal to be there also, to be consistent on doing the good deeds. A'mal salihah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this month of Ashura the most important lesson we can say he gave us is the lesson of our Iman that trust your Iman have your trust not just faith that I believe in Allah I believe in Rasulullah and I know these articles no have that trust have that trust is not just believing in just like I say believe me so we believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but do we believe him too? 
For example, when he says, if you give charity, you give sadaqah, your wealth will increase. Do we believe him or we just believe in him that he's a prophet of Allah? But when money increases with charity, I have to. So believe him. Believing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa it was that day, Ashura. It was that day that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa when he's leaving Egypt with all of Bani Israel and right there they see the ocean in front of us, the army behind them, Pharaoh, all of his army behind them. Look at the situation of Pharaoh. Last night, no one could ever think anything can happen to this man. The way he had set his power, his control, Bani Israel could not even think, would not even dream about doing anything happening to Fir'aun. Overnight, overnight, everything flipped. That's it. It's the flip of a coin with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. What opened up the ocean? What made the path for Bani Israel to be safe, to be protected? It's this statement from Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, that is statement of Iman. Kalla inna ma'i rabbi sahdeen. When Bani Israel are saying, inna la mudrakun, now they will get us. Now Fir'aun and his army will get us. Look, they're right there. They're right there. Inna la mudrakun, they're getting us. Within five minutes, they will be right here. We are all done. And Musa alayhi salatu was salam at that moment. Kalla, no, never. Kalla, subhanallah. I wish we can say that kalla once in our life. That is the iman. Kalla. Why? Musa, how can you say that? Why? Inna ma'i rabbi sayahdeen. Because my rabb is with me. Because my rabb is with me. Is my Rabb with me? Can I say, Kalla inna ma'i Rabbi? When a difficulty comes, when a hardship comes, when a situation changes, be it within my home, outside, anywhere, can I say, Kalla inna ma'i Rabbi? Alhamdulillah, I have been doing this, I am trying this. I never miss salah. I try and make dua every night. I recite Quran every day. I do the dhakar every day. Kalla inna ma'iya rabbi. I know that I'm getting paid at the end of the month. And this should be the amount on the check. Why? If someone will tell me that this month you will be getting only $500, I'll say, no way. Kalla. I will have that kalla there. I worked the whole month. I know how many hours I have worked. And I know what my salary is. If you're telling me that I'm getting 500 instead of 10,000, kalla, that will never happen. I will never let that happen. But when it comes to faith and iman, is there anywhere we can use the same word? No, alhamdulillah, I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kalla, no, this is not going to happen because I know I have already talked to my Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam. Look at his situation. What situation he's in. That people are staying far from him. They can't even get close to him. He's so sick. No one wants to get around him. And people are mocking him. Mocking his wife. Look, your husband was claiming to be a prophet. Your husband was claiming to be sent by God. Why God have done this to him now? She has to work. In people's homes, wash dishes so that she can get some food and medication for her husband, Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam. And in that situation, more than seven years laying down in the desert, in the jungle, where no one wants to visit him. In that situation, his dua, Rabbi inni masani al-durru wa anta arhamur rahimeen. Ya Allah, I'm going through a difficulty. And you are Arhamur Rahimin. After three days, we won't, we, we can't say Anta Arhamur Rahimin. With all of those difficulties, Wa Anta Arhamur Rahimin. I say Arhamur Rahimin also. When? When my pockets are full. When I got everything. 
And you ask the person, how is it going? Alhamdulillah, Allah is so merciful because my business is running well. But if, God forbid, it goes the other way. Can we say, yeah, Allah is Arhamur Rahimeen? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. This is the lesson of these days. Having full hope in the Rahman, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith is narrated by Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. Imam ibn Kathir, Imam ibn Jarir, Imam ibn Habban, Imam Hakim, Imam Zahabi with an authentic isnad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when I was going for Mi'raj, he's going from where to where? He's going from Makkah to Baytul Maqdis. He's going for Isra and Mi'raj. A special trip that Allah took him for that trip as a gift from Rabbul Alameen after all of his sacrifices. After all the difficulties he went through. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking him to Baytul Maqdis. From there he's supposed to go to the seventh heaven. Who is in Baytul Maqdis? Subhanallah. Best gathering ever you can ever have in this world. All the Anbiya are there. And if all the Anbiya are there, imagine how many Malaika would be there. And the special guest, guest is on his way. The guest of honor is on his way. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, he is going to be the Imam of the Anbiya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, On the way, I smell some fragrance. He's smelling fragrance on his way. If all the Anbiya are in Baytul Maqdis, so many Malaika are in Baytul Maqdis, where the fragrance must be from? There must be a lot of bahur, a lot of perfume, a lot of fragrance in Baytul Maqdis today. And he asked Jibreel alayhi salatu is still he's on, in the skies. He's in the air, on his buraq. And he asked Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, where this fragrance is from. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam said, Min qabri ma shitati ibnati Fir'aun. This is from the grave of the woman who used to comb the hair of Fir'aun's daughter. This is the fragrance of what? This is the fragrance of her a'mal and iman in her qabr. These are the flowers of the a'mal saliha and her iman which is in her qabr. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam says, this is from the qabr of that woman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma uhiya ilayya fiha shay. I haven't received any revelation about her. Jibreel, please tell me. Tell me something about her. Tell me something about her. Where is he going? He's going to Baytul Maqdis. For what? To lead all the imams, all the anbiya. To lead them in salah. But yet, he finds out pious woman and he wants to know about her we want to read we want to read a lot but how much do we read of the biographies of the pious pious people how much do we know about sahaba about tabi'een about the great people of the ummah that will really when we read their biographies you feel that you are at the highest level of your iman by reading about them after a thousand years the person has been buried thousand years ago with all of his amal. But today when you read about him, you feel that your, your iman is getting to the highest level. Imagine how, what would be the level of their iman. You're totally disconnected. So, what is her story? Jibreel alayhi salam said, and now, of course, we have to move fast forward. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam said, she was combing the hair of Fir'aun's daughter. The comb fair, fell. So she said, Bismillah, a mu'min. This is a mu'min who's been told the true iman and amal. Anything happens, Bismillah. Don't keep on making other noises, other sounds. Don't just shout for nothing. Say Bismillah, say Alhamdulillah, say Subhanallah. Recite some form of dhikr of Allah so that when the angel would come at the time of death and he starts pulling your ruh out rather than ouch and ooh, you will say Bismillah, you will say La ilaha illallah. So Fir'aun's daughter asked her, 
Are you referring to my dad? She said, what do you mean your dad? I'm referring to the Lord of my, my Lord and your dad's Lord. My Rabb and your dad's Rabb. Who is that? Is there any Rabb beside my father? She said, yes. Allah is our Rabb. Right away she went and told her father. He called her. Did you say Bismillah, you believe in any Rabb other than my Rabb, other than me? Yes, Allah is my Rabb. Fir'aun write their orders for a big pot to be brought and boil the oil. She had two young children. One is infant, who is still breastfeeding. He said, bring her children, her daughters also. And right there, while she's watching, they took the older daughter from her hand and they're about to throw her in the boiling oil. And she says, Fir'aun, please, I have one wish if you would honor it. He said, go tell me what it is. One desire, one wish. And that is, if after you burn all of us, she's not saying don't burn us. After you burn all of us, make sure just put, take our bones together and bury us in one qabr. You are depriving me from my daughters in this life. I have my trust in Allah. Bury us in one qabr. I will have my daughters with me over there. The hadith says, Fir'aun threw all of them one after another. And when, she, when he threw her daughter in the boiling oil, they saw tears in her eyes initially, and they saw her smiling. Fir'aun asked her, what's wrong with you? Are you insane? Out of your mind? We burned your daughter right in front of you. She was roasted. She was boiled right there. And you are smiling. She said, I saw her entering into the Jannah right there. This is the fragrance from her qabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that iman, that trust in Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that strength of iman and tawfiq of a'mal salihah.